There is a wound on the body of Christ, and thank goodness the doctor is in. As Catholic Christians, following St. Paul, we refer to the Church as the body of Christ, that we are joined to our head, Jesus Christ himself. And so when we think about the Church on earth, we can think about the Church as the body of Christ. Now, of course, different than the sacramental presence of the Most Holy Eucharist, the Holy Sacrament of the altar, but the Church itself can be thought of and looked as as the body of Christ. Now, what would be a wound on the body of Christ? A wound on the body of Christ would be something that affects you and I, the members of the body, even though it doesn't affect the glorified body of our Lord and Savior, but something that affects you and I in our lives and our mission to make Christ present in the world and our mission which we receive in baptism to live out his life. So what is this wound, this open lesion, this bleeding sore on the body of Christ? It's hypocrisy. Now, not hypocrisy as you might think it is. Ho, ho, ho. Actually, it's wrong thinking about what hypocrisy is. The modern idea of hypocrisy has left many of you wounded and bleeding and oftentimes hesitant to exercise your Christian role of being a prophet in the midst of the world. See, what the world sees as hypocrisy isn't hypocrisy. The world will often yell at a Christian and call you a hypocrite when you just try to live your Christian life and fail. Every single Christian is going to try to live their Christian life and have failures. You're going to sin. That's what it means to be a Christian, right? We're sinners in need of a Savior. Every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. But a hypocrite is something different than that. But sometimes as a Christian, you try to give witness to your faith, to invite others to live their faith, and they see you stumble and fall, and they call you a hypocrite. And because you're afraid of that, you're afraid of being called a hypocrite, of uh, the shame that that brings, the suffering it brings. You're afraid to giving witness lest you stumble and fail. This is a wound, a bleeding lesion on the body of Christ. So what is hypocrisy actually? Hypocrisy is different than trying and failing. Hypocrisy is having two different standards. One standard for me and another standard for everyone else. So that if I was to tell people that swearing using the Lord's name in vain is wrong, but then I myself went around and used the Lord's name in vain and acted like there was no repercussions for it, then that would be hypocrisy. Now, if I tell people that uh, using the Lord's name in sin is wrong and I in a moment of sin, whether it was thoughtlessness, whatever it would be, stubbing my toe, uh, anger, whatever it might be, I use the Lord's name in vain, that's a sin. And I'd have to go to confession for that sin. So that isn't hypocrisy, because I'm not holding myself to a different standard as I hold everyone else to. So I hope this encourages you to give witness to your faith, to not fear just simply failing, to not fear if someone calls you a hypocrite. And if you hear someone using the line hypocrite in the wrong way, inaccurately, falsely, defend the body of Christ. And Make sure that people know the true meaning of the word hypocrite. That's different than just a Christian who tries and falls, a Christian who tries and fails. Because a Christian who tries and fails is who every one of us is. And our Lord knows that. Our Lord loves us even in the midst of those weaknesses, trials, and failures. So restore vigor, energy, health to the body of Christ by giving witness to your faith and no longer being afraid of the word hypocrite. Unless, of course, you actually are a hypocrite, then repent and change your ways and come back to the Lord. But yes, no longer be afraid of the word hypocrite. God bless you. Have a great week.